Black Friday was huge in the industry. I, I was up all night, literally, like pounding away at stuff and getting things finished. And it was, took a toll, for sure. I had like a full head of hair <laughs> before I started. All right, let's get Andy Stroman up here. Founder and CEO of Campsaver.com. How did the idea come to you? What prompted you to actually grasp it and run with it? I'm working for a biotech company up there doing their design. And when they started their business, they had this grant from this professor up there, like a couple million bucks. They went out and bought this gigantic warehouse of laboratory equipment. Incubators, centrifuges, stoves, Bunsen burners, all the stuff. So it's sitting in this warehouse up there in Logan, Utah. So, hey, we got this warehouse full of stuff. You want to start selling it for us? I was like, sure. Why not? So I created a website, start posting it, and we start bringing all this revenue from this old military laboratory equipment. Ten, fifteen thousand dollars a month. Learned PPC, learned shopping cart stuff, learned marketing, and I was, I mean. That's just what I started doing at that point. And that's why I got into e-commerce um, from the design part I was doing at school. So, uh, but that kind of was the segue into e-commerce, selling lab equipment for a biotech company. Okay. That's not what I thought the answer would be. Right. <laughs> I thought it would be like, I like camping. I was not into camping. I mean, I was for scouts and stuff, but I, was, I got to Tenderfoot, which is the first level, if you guys know what that is. <laughs> and I couldn't stand scouts, but um, I like being outdoors for sure. I had a friend who had this site called Camp Circle. He was a developer. I thought, that's pretty cool. Like, what did you do, Dave? And he said, well, I, there's a company in town called Pixend. They warehouse all this product in there. They've got Coleman. All I do is, like, I take an order. He had a, in his apartment, too. and said, I take an order, then I just drop ship it. I said, well, what's drop ship? He said, well, I don't have the inventory. They just take my order and they ship it for me. Well, he built his own shopping cart and wasn't anything special. And I said, well, hey, Dave, would you skin that for me? Kid, I'm thinking he's going to say no, right? It's competition for him. He's like, yeah, I'll skin it for you. Said, well, how much? He said, 1500 bucks. All right, skin your site for me. I'll pay 1500 bucks. Three months later, I was drop shipping products. So I was importing their catalog, drop shipping stuff. The website was a front end with a database, and like, that's all it was. There was no search. There was like, it was right-hand navigation. It was every color in the rainbow was on my website. Like I just colored the heck out of that thing. That's, that's all there was. I mean, that's how it started. And um, the first year out of my dorm, it was like $60,000 in revenue. The next year it was like $600,000 in revenue. And it just kind of like did that. Your revenue is growing at what, 1,000%? How did you start to fill out your team? You know, it was all local f folks, family. My brother worked there. I think my brother and every one of my brother-in-laws worked there at college and stuff like that. I think that's one of like, my biggest um, you know, failures. I had a ton of failures, by the way. But one of them was I didn't find a co-founder. I had a co-founder CTO that we were going to do it together. I took him and his wife. Like, this is like year one. I took him and his wife out to dinner with, and the entire conversation, she wouldn't say a word. And I could tell something was wrong. He was a student too, like he had no other options for him. I think that they were like, I don't know, but she just felt completely wrong about it, didn't say a word. I guess he was still trying to convince his wife and like the next day he's like, no, I'm out. I want my money that you've, um, he like did some work for me. He's like, I want $30,000. <laughs> I said, here's five, see you later, man. Uh, oh. <laughs> but that was like, I didn't have a co-founder. Yeah. And so it was tough. Like. No one cared about the business like I did through the entire process because they didn't have the skin in the game. I wish there was someone there kind of did what I had to do, like had to sacrifice, I'm doing it on my own most of the time. As you scale uh, an e-commerce company, what are some of the worst parts? People see, uh, you know, these big brands, big e-commerce companies and think they run seamlessly. What are some of the worst parts that get you there? Every three years, the warehouse and location changed from apartment to 100 square feet with spiders everywhere to 2,500 square feet, to 8,000 square feet, to 30,000 square feet, to that's where, we, where I ended a couple years ago. And so every three years we were moving. Now, fast forward to today, there's so many more better options than sticking on one warehouse and, and buying you know, six months supply or eight months supply, which is the outdoor industry, that's what you do. You, you, you buy six months ahead of time. Every three years, platform change. Um, custom deal, where I was logging into some MySQL database, Terrible .NET solution, which soured me on Microsoft forevermore. Um, after that, it was Magento, which was a dang good platform. But by the end of, like, when I um, sold the business, man, I was pushing that platform to the brink. Our site was super slow, hundreds of thousands of SKUs. That thing was crawling. And I was spending half my time just dealing with speed and caching and things like that. So it was time for another platform change. So those were always difficult, for sure. And then also just um, 
you know, scaling up the, the team. I wasn't very good at like scaling up the executive team, but as we got better and got people in HR, you know, things got a lot easier. It seems like, and you could tell the audience, this was bootstrapped. Is that correct? Yo, it was completely bootstrapped from day one um, in hindsight, again. And I've learned a ton. Probably could have uh, got some additional help. I was always focused on like three months. If sales weren't good, like I knew my business so well, if sales weren't good tomorrow or the next day, I knew it and I was like on top of that. But remember, every time I earned more money, all I did was buy more inventory. It was like this continual cycle of additional SKUs and more inventory. We could always buy what we wanted actually. It was more lack of like marketing and selling it. And you had to kind of grow with the market too, to a certain extent. And the outdoor industry, everything I'm wearing right now is from outdoor, by the way. So it wasn't just camp stoves and sleeping bags. Everything I'm wearing, I bought from Camp Saver. So it wasn't just this gear company. The outdoor is kind of a lifestyle now. I can say I'm an out, I'm like outdoorsy, it's like a new word. And some of you might be that way, but um, I don't shop at Gap or the mall. I shop at REI, or I did not ever shop at REI. I shop at Camp Saver. Um, How did you decide which products would make it onto the platform? Um, if I see a Nike, pair of Nikes at the store and it's 50% off, I know it's a good value because it's a Nike. If you see a pair of, of no-name brand shoes at 50% off, you're probably still not going to buy it because there's no value there. You have, you have no idea what it's worth. So in outdoor especially, it's super snotty in a way, like high-end. And like some of them won't even sell to you. They're like, well, we don't want to sell our products to you because you know, we don't know who you are. And that was a challenge at first, but we kind of overcame that. What was the best year? The best Maybe not revenue-wise, but like happiness, revenue-wise combination. Yeah, the, I think one of the best years was when we upgraded from our Microsoft solution to Magento. There's a shiny new platform that had all these amazing things I wanted to do, and it was going to cost me like $10,000 a year to do that. And I think revenue that year, we were, I don't know, we were probably 7 or $8 million, and I think the next year we grew like 100% almost. Just by way of the platform. And we're all working in like a room this size right here. There was no HR department, so it was pretty awesome. <laughs> we could say, pretty much do whatever we wanted, uh, for better or for worse. No lawsuits, ever. Um, I don't know how close we were, but a lot of YouTube, a lot of things like viral stuff we were watching all the time, a lot of j practical jokes. It was a good time. Yeah. Um, I hadn't built the next warehouse, and that was really painful, for sure. And so it's almost like every three years where things are rosy before all the changes, those were kind of the good years. And then it was like, replatform warehouse, and then you'd go like this, and then like that. The first year was awesome too, because I didn't do any accounting. I was in Switzerland for a month, filling orders there. I had no employees, and playing Xbox, and the business was kind of growing on the side. <laughs> the, yeah. And I was like, dude, if I can just get to like, I had like three or four orders a day. I'm like, man, if I can get to like 12 orders a day, I'm just going to like retire. <laughs> this, I'm going to be done. Like, you know what kind of money that's going to bring in? Uh, and I'm not even, I'm in overhead, so this is going to be sweet. And man, like 12, I'm like, dude, if I can get to 20, if I can get to 40, if I can get to 80, if I can get to 500, it's never ended. Never ended. So all of the blood, sweat, and tears culminates in a sell of campsaver.com, right? Right. In 2000, uh, what's today? 15, 2015, September. So explain for folks how that, that occurs and how that happens. Oh, you get to a certain point where you're big enough and relevant enough um, where people start taking notice. So Camp Saver, when we first started, imagine 100 retailers selling the same things. And we're just one of those. And I knew early on, look, we got to separate. Agile sprint development, before it was a thing, I was doing that like every night. Change this, like no one told me I couldn't change something, so I did whatever I wanted. And we kind of rapidly got better. Where a lot of these retailers, they came from retail into this foreign world of e-commerce. I came from e-commerce into retail. And I wasn't beholden to anybody to, to like change my business or develop this. We just did it ourselves as fast as we wanted to. All of a sudden, Camp Silver was probably top 10 in their space, and then maybe top five. You know, REI, Backcountry, Moose Jaw. You know, Camp Saver's like right there. And like people are like, where did these guys come from? A uh, strategic one to be in this space, and to get in the outdoor space is extremely hard. You want to sell Patagonia? Good luck. They don't, they don't need you. They don't want you, and they'll tell you that. Um, so we had Patagonia, and Marmot and all these great brands, and 
they want a part of that action. People that say, you know, I need to be laser focused. Dude, I hope not. Plus, if what you're laser focused on isn't what's going to work, or as someone comes through and steals your idea, then you just start over. So not being laser focused on one thing, the laser focus was amazing e-commerce outdoor company, but in different channels and different ways to solve those problems. Traditional retail is struggling right now because they all come from these dinosaur systems and legacy platforms. That's why Amazon destroys them all and Sears is gone because they couldn't adapt. So my industry is the same thing. It's all like traditional retail, little partners. And there's a lot of problems technologically. We weren't technologically connected to any supplier in our network. There was no integrations or anything like that. Ship me the product and then they were like, pay us the money. They didn't know what we had, what we were doing. I would say that I learned more in the last two years since I sold the business or three years than I did the prior 15. When you do your own business and your head's down, you miss a lot that's going on around you. Even your personal failings and things that you're not very good at. And I've been doing it for 15 years. It was great. It's an amazing industry. When people say don't work in what you love, whatever. Dude, if you love it, work in it. You work up eight hours a day or, or more on something you love. It's amazing. Andy Strowman, CampSaver.com. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.